Phenomenology and the turn to religion. Two terms that we hear thrown about in discussions of theology, philosophy of religion, philosophy relating to religion. Connor, why study phenomenology and the turn to religion? Well, I think that phenomenology itself offered a new way of doing philosophy in the 20th century, which tried to return us to the plenitude, the, 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 the sheer thereness of it, which endlessly demanded our attention, the sheer plenitude that we couldn't ignore, we couldn't, we couldn't reduce it in the bad sense of analytic philosophy or reductive science. And as a century and on 20th century, this, this, this notion pushed further and further and further until certain figures started to speak in openly religious terms as phenomenologists. And this became known as the turn to religion in phenomenology. You have people like Jean-Luc Marion, people like Jean-Yves Lacoste, you have people uh, uh, like Michel Henry. And they found that if phenomenology was true to itself, it really did have to start to invoke or employ religious terms, not confessionally, but analytically. And for them, the alternative was an absolute loss. As Husserl called it, a crisis. And he talked about barbarism. And Michel Henry, who was writing since after the Second World War, and only died in 2000, and I think 2000 in fact, um, he, did, he basically pushed phenomenology his entire life in a very, very singular manner, until towards the end of his life, his last three books were so explicitly Christian, part of a trilogy, I Am the Truth, uh, which is a phenomenology of John's Gospel, Incarnation, and, um, uh, and the Words of Christ. Uh, and the Words of Christ was a phenomenology of the synoptics. So this is a phenomenologist doing this, this is not a theologian, and he's thinking, I can do this legitimately. So, for example, I am the truth. Henri goes, listen, forget, let's not ask, is it true? Let's, it's, it's speaking, to, it, it's there, John's Gospel's there. Well, let's go to this phenomenon and assume it is. What is it telling us about the world, and does that make sense? And Henri did a radical critique of philosophy where he said that we had, the world had lapsed into barbarism, had lapsed into bad reductionism, it had lapsed into nihilism, that we were actually victims of Galilean science and that um, we were merely chemicals, we were merely atoms dancing around, as Democrates would have said, and we were basically the walking dead. We were the walking dead. And this is because we had turned away from life and gone into the world. And he thought life, or flesh, the very fact that you can pinch yourself and you can feel that, you can feel that, he called it your pathetic. You can feel things, you can feel pain, you can feel joy. These are real phenomena. This is, this is your very intrinsic, irreducible self. And that testified to something, he thought, this excess, uh, which the world does not know about. For him, the world is dust and bones. For him, he wants the flesh. He wants this, 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 this radical dependence, this radical um, participation in something. And he called it ipseity, the selfhood you have, which is not in the world. You can't find it. If you look for it in the world, you'll be cutting up your skull, look finding your brain and cutting up your brain. Keep looking. You're looking at your chemicals and ballet. You won't find yourself. But your, affectate, your affectation is your patheticness, the very fact that you can feel something. And it's non-negotiable, you feeling it. Yeah, that is you. That was the more accurate way, and that for him was life, our participating in transcendental obscenity, which he later thought was, um, in light of John's gospels, uh, uh, gospel and the other gospels, he thought was, was God's son, as, as a logos. And he thought that just as we participate in life, we are sons in the son. This is radical adoption. Just like for Plato, we participate in existence, Aquinas too, we participate in the thexis. For Henri, we participate in the sun. We are adopted to the sun. Uh, 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 we participate in life, and that becomes ourself. And he said, listen, you can't step outside us. Try it. You'll go to dust. It'll just be like that. You'll do go to dust. Um, 
you will not find yourself. You will be a corpse. Whilst this returns us to a religious sensibility and a more realistic view of the world for him. Colour, again, dances back before us. Uh, whilst, whilst from way back when with the Greeks uh, uh, and up to John Locke and people like that, oh, colour, it's merely a secondary quality. We can get rid of that. Uh, people are merely atoms. People are merely chemicals. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. And soon we find ourselves in this barbaric, nihilistic state, of which he thought phenomenology, using religious language, could rescue us from. Radical ipsaity takes us from a philosophical quest for the real mm -hmm. into the fundamentally Christian concept mm -hmm. and the fundamentally Christian quest, who is the Christ? Mm -hmm. In Henri, that seems to be just a progression in his own life mm -hmm. and a progression that he's inviting his reader to make. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it breaks all the old boundaries, philosophy, theology, Absolutely. The, uh, speculative theology, revealed theology. So what you present as a very coherent narrative from A to B, is actually something that radically cuts across many of the very hardest mm -hmm. boundaries in the discipline mm -hmm. going back to the Middle Ages. Well, yeah, I, although I do think that something like Aquinas did have this radical crossing of disciplines. He employed mm -hmm. everyone. Anything that was in the service of the truth, Aquinas would employ. You know, whether you were pagan, you know, Jew, Muslim, whatever, he didn't care. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he had this grand synthesis of he found Anything was a friend of the truth, what well, was true. Mm. So he, he was radically synthetic. And Henri is absolutely cutting across boundaries. For him, indeed, religious people could very often be part of the world. They hadn't really taken the notion of being in the world but not part of it. Because as soon as you become part of it, you're dead for Henri. You, 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 do, you implode into dust, as I said. And for him, he says, but does John's gospel not cross all boundaries. Hmm. Does it not? In the beginning was the word recapitulating Genesis. Uh, it's, so it's going across time and, and, and look at the motifs in it. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll have no life. You know, it, it's, but take him at his word. This is my body which is given for you. Really? And, and that's a metaphysical statement. Whilst we domesticate it religiously, for Henri, wow, just read it and believe it as a cosmological revelation, how is the world going to look then in terms of disciplines? Or, to take another example from John's Gospel, if I don't wash your feet and you don't wash my feet, mm. you have no share in me. Absolutely. And there's also, the, 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 it, it, and, and again, the Gospels do play in Henri's hand here when you have, you know, let the dead bury their dead, or, and so forth, and what does that mean? Yeah, always lots of arguments about that, but it's a pretty radical statement. And in a way, it's consonant with Henri's notion of the world and life. Yeah? I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's, it's a person. I am the Logos. I am life. You try and find out elsewhere, buddy, you're stuffed. Let the dead bury their dead. Yeah? Right. So it's a radical, for him, it's a radical revelation of cosmological import that cannot be domesticated by the religious mind, and cannot be avoided by the philosophical mind. He doesn't see them as separate. They're both, in a sense, deliberately averting their gaze from the very thing which they're engaging with. And he wants to bring it together. He wants to drive them out of the temple with the whip to the manner in which they actually honor that which is before their eyes, or which they purport to believe. Connor, thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>